Okay, self-validation. Uh, I had a tweet about this earlier today and I thought it would be a good thing to just make a little video about because it's something that's on my mind. It's been on my mind for a while. Basically that being able to honor the validity of your own experience seems to be one of the most core skills that there is. And I've been tracking patterns that show up for me in conversation and realizing that a lot of dysfunctional conversational moves that I make are on some level or another downstream of me not having, not taking the time to really honor and validate that what it is that I am experiencing, feeling, thinking, perceiving, knowing is real. And so there's a, a need because I'm not doing that internally. I don't want to say I can't because I'm actually pretty good at it when I remember to now, although I used to be worse at it. But when I am able to, when I, re when I, when I remember in the moment to validate my own experience, I can, um, it's a lot easier to not say something and to only say it if it makes sense um, to say it in the situation, you know, because I actually think that whatever it is that I'm uh, saying will, will help the conversation. If I'm not self-validating, then there can be a desire to blurt out whatever it is that's on my mind just so that it can be heard. And so essentially it's like, I need to learn how to consistently hear myself first, whatever thoughts arise for me in a conversation, I'm realizing that I need to basically just go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Whatever it is, even if it's only a partial view on the situation, you know, it's like, ah, but this person never, whatever, whatever. Like maybe they do actually sometimes, whatever, whatever. But before correcting myself or before blurting that out, just acknowledging that there's some perception I'm having that, ah, this person never, whatever, whatever. And being able to, uh, being able to sort of self-soothe or just recognize that I'm experiencing something real there, even if the words aren't quite accurate, whatever. Just hold, yes, there's something you're knowing about this and it matters. When I can hold that, as I said, it's a lot easier to not just blurt things out. Um, when I can't, it's like anything that comes to mind, I almost feel like I have to share it. And some interesting backstory on this for me is um, about a decade ago, I got involved with a group that was working on developing new, new cultural um, practices and so forth. And uh, one of the things that that group did a lot of was of revealing things that came up, revealing judgments, revealing um, shameful thoughts, revealing various other things. And, um, and then people would have these transformative experiences of discovering that when they put out these things that were so scary, they actually were welcomed. Um, people were able to receive them and hold them and validate their experience and so forth. Um, we didn't use that word, but people felt welcome. And so we learned, oh, th you know, this shameful stuff is not actually so bad. I can talk about it. This is really powerful. And it's really powerful to have, have people do this. And I even got to the point where I could sometimes imagine saying something out loud and imagine everybody receiving it and know that it would be so received. And then it's like, I didn't even need to say it. So that's kind of like self-validation by proxy. But the problem is that doesn't work in exactly the moments when you most need it. Because if you're sitting with something, as I sometimes have been, that I feared would not actually be well received by the people that I was with, then I could not imagine revealing it and have it be received and then feel validated. Because if I imagined saying it, I actually didn't imagine it being received but I was sort of in the habit of saying saying things anyway and so I would put them out and they would be not not received often um it depends and sometimes they would be sort of like sure it's fine that you're saying that but there's a, like a subtle invalidation that it matters or whatever else um depending on the people and so and the uh, and on what it was that I was saying and so basically um those are exactly the moments when what I most needed to do was validate my own perspective and really hold that whatever it was that I was perceiving, even if again, it was a judgment or a, a complaint or something that I would on some level recognize as partial or confused or something like that, that it's, it's seeing something real that matters and that the rest of me must not be fully seeing because otherwise it wouldn't even feel a need to say that to the rest of me. It would just be my whole perspective. Um, and so 
in some ways, this is a practice that I've been um, that I've been on for a couple of years now. It really kicked off with the bioemotive retreat that I went to in uh, summer 2019 at the Monastic Academy, um, where I learned the value of speaking phrases that resonate for some part of you, even if the rest of you sort of disagrees or whatever, and just being able to find out, yeah, what comes up in me if I say I feel sad or I feel betrayed even. Um, not as a claim that somebody betrayed me and that that's how the sort of social story should go, but being able to honor that there's some thought, some feeling that I'm having there and welcome it. And so that applies to pretty much every thought that anybody could have. And um, yeah, and so I've just been realizing recently in a few personal conversations that I haven't been doing as much about self-validation as I know I'm capable of. And um, yeah, uh, that's why it's on my mind. I've been enjoying this amazingly sunny day uh, here on Vancouver Island and walking around and dancing with my shirt off and uh, thought I would record a video. So this is it.